before using their software. Did you know Google's TOS prohibits anyone in the United States under 18 to use their services? Or that Facebook retains the right to use any content you may post in their advertising or elsewhere? Or that it's a violation to lie about your stats on eHarmony to the extent that you could be in violation if you gain a little weight and don't update your profile? Will the court case over cyberbullying change the landscape of the internet forever? Uh, don't tell me we need to start reading the fine print. Breaking the law, it's the loop. New York to help us make sense of it all, Deputy Editor of Special Projects at Forbes.com, David E. Walt is here. How are you, Dave? I'm good, thanks. Good. Uh, let's, let's quickly recap the case against Lori Drew and how it involved the whole MySpace terms of service. I mean, it's a tragic case, but it could have huge ramifications for the rest of the Internet. Yeah, well, the short story is that Lori Drew is this crazy psycho mom who created a fake account on MySpace. She pretended to be a 16-year-old boy, and she did it so that she could check up on and eventually harass one of her daughter's friends, this 13-year-old girl, Megan Meyer. And eventually she harassed this little girl so much that she drove the little girl to commit suicide. So the police arrested her and prosecuted her, but there's no real statute for this. Like they, they're calling it cyberbullying, but there's no laws against cyberbullying. But they did, so they did they find her guilty of violating the MySpace terms of service because she made the fake profile, right? Exactly. That's what they finally found. They, they, they wanted to send this woman to jail because she did something terrible. So that's the thing that they figured out that she did wrong and they could get her for. And, and let's talk about these terms of service agreements because, uh, look, a any piece of software you install every time iTunes changes an icon, you get 25 pages of text that we all scroll through, pretend we read, and we click agree. Um, are we now legally liable? I mean, has this set precedent? What are we missing here? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, the, that's the, the long and short of it. If this is upheld, that means that it's not just a breach of contract if you violate those terms of service. You're actually committing criminal fraud and can be prosecuted and sent to jail for and a year or more. And in some cases, I heard that simply using a website means you agree to their services or their terms of services implicitly. You don't even have to say you agree to them. It's just by using their service, you've agreed. That's exactly right. On a lot of these sites, you don't actually ever, it's not like software where the window pops up and you have to click accept. On some websites, it's buried on, a, on an inside page on the site somewhere where you never even see the terms of service, but they're there, and that makes it legal, and you have to follow them. So if I'm on a, a dating website like a Match or an eHarmony, and I don't know which specifically has this, but I know some of them say you have to be single to be on there. Let's say I, I'm not. I go up there. I agree. I sign up. I could now be prosecuted, right? Like, this could, this could actually affect me because I, I lied about something in my profile. Yes, that's exactly the case. Do you, you're do you violating expect the terms that of service. The, the sites or the police are, actually have the resources and the time to go after this? Or are they just trying to cover their behinds? Well, no, I mean, that's where we back up a little bit, is that, realistically, sites don't want to prosecute their users, and the police and the government don't have the resources. They don't, this is not a crime they want to prosecute. But the danger is that this is now a tool. This is a way for them to get at people. So maybe this sort of thing where they want to get you for something else, they can't, they're going to trot this out and say, well, you used Google and you're only 17, so you're a felon. Right. Well, I'm sure that everybody out there, for one reason or another, has made a fake IM profile or a fake MySpace profile at one point in time. Uh, would you now advise those people to stay away from that because th there could be that lawsuit? Or are you saying, hey, hey, obviously they don't want to enforce this. This is only going to be used in extreme cases. Yeah, I think we can take a breath. It's not time just yet to say, I said I'm done with the Internet, I'm backing away, I'm scared of all this. But I think it's something that we have to, we have to be careful about. The, the courts are going to review this case. They might overturn the ruling, which would make all this moot. Right. Um, if not, then there needs to be some reorganization. There needs to be something done to fix that. Sure. Well, Internet users need something to be upset about, though. So telling us to take a breath isn't going to do it. I, I want to throw my caps lock on and get pissed off. So a as a user of so many sites and software, then, could we perhaps rise up and demand like, a, like an online user's bill of rights that says, I don't want to read your terms of service. I just want you to have this gold stamp of approval that says you agree to not sell my info and I agree not to lie or, or something that's in plain English because so many of these things are written in legalese that nobody understands. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I mean, one of the ways that Internet users have dealt with risks online is like, look at like the online privacy issue and whether or not your data is going to be secure. When I go to a store online to buy something, I might look for some of the stamps given out by the Better Business Bureau or by Trustee right. saying, this site is secure, your credit card will not be stolen. Could be the same thing with this, where maybe, you know, some public interest group or some user group comes out and says, you're getting the stamp of approval and you don't have a really super obnoxious terms of service. All right, Dave, I'm putting you on, on notice then. Will you sign my online petition that I am far too lazy to create when the show is over? 
<laughs> I'm signature number one. Nice. Thanks, David, for joining us. Always a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for keeping us in the loop, sir. Thanks. Right now, let's go over to Olivia, mm. who, true story, she's 102 years old on her MySpace profile. You um. No, no, no. Sunscreen. That's that is an interesting when the holiday shopping concept, yeah. Because uh, you know, in some cases, it's right people now, like in the case of MySpace. Uh, you know, I I don't want to be bothered and hassled by all the porn spinners. Women don't get that bothered, but for men, it seems that we do. Uh, so yeah, man, could something be done? You know, could. <laughs> You can start by ditching the wallet and switching it out with things, the money for a simple money. Um, that's much better. But, but yeah, I mean, because that's like, you know, if, if there's a problem, you're going to try to work around and get that problem. Unfortunately, that's being started by laying the you know, rules in terms of service. So. Put them on a scanner and scan yeah. the front hmm. and back of each car. So what do you do? Then how do you, how do you work that? Put them on a scanner and scan the front and back of each car. And then put them on a scanner and scan the front and back of each car. The next time you're at a oh, checkout counter, just pull the card you need from but, your phone. Uh, I think this is a lot more complicated than well what, you know, is going to be, like, what you're going to need. You uh, I, I think, like, this is still an issue that's going to need to, um, Enter the barcode number for each card. Card. And it's still an issue that is going to take time to, to you know, figure out and solve. Maybe it opens up a can of worms.